Hello students, welcome back to the course on organizational behavior, individual dynamics in organization. We move to the fourth lecture of the module four. In the previous lecture, if you have looked into, we have, we have actually seen the relevance of emotion. We have actually tried to understand what do you mean by emotional intelligence is. Today, we take up another important topic, which is stress. Now, this lecture should not be stressful to you. It should be about understanding stress. I'm Dr. Abraham Salaisak. I'm a faculty at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. Straight away moving into our topic today on understanding stress, let's first understand our theme of the lecture today. Adequate resources help reduce the stressful nature of demands when demands and resources match. I would like to, I would like you to take 10 seconds of your time, introspect within yourself, with your workplace, with the people you see across in your workplace. It could be your, uh, your boss, it could be your co-worker, or it could be your subordinate. Think of this particular statement and see how relevant it is in each of your cases. Adequate resources help reduce the stressful nature of demands when demands and resources match. You also can uh, introspect within yourself whether this is actually correct. So this is our uh, attempt to understand uh, a little bit of, about stress, which is, I would say, a concept or aspect which is not uh, understood that much. So let's delve deeper into this. What do you mean by stress? What is stress? Now, stress can impact emotions at workplace to a great extent because our theme lastly hovers around emotion. I do not want to have a disengagement from the main topic, but let's look into stress as an unpleasant psychological process that occurs in response to environmental pressures. You would never see an individual who is stressed, who sits alone or maybe who is not in a company or something like that. Stress always emanates from environmental pressure. Stress always comes from environmental cues or from behavior of others, from the situations, what you are in. It, it hardly is a, a problem an individual faces when he is in isolation. Isolation can be a consequence of stress. But when you are looking into stress, you have to understand it as uh, an unpleasant psychological process that occurs in response to a particular environmental pressure or a set of environmental pressure. So its, it's uh, repercussions may extend beyond the workplace. It can also go to one's well-being also. This, this makes stress, stress all the more critical. We might not have you know, taken stress this seriously if we had restricted only stress to workplace. That's the beauty of this course also. We are not only restricting the course to workplace. Predominantly, our uh, discussions, our elaborations are all pertaining to workplace, but we are also taking it to an individual level because it is individual dynamics. So when you are looking into stress as an unpleasant psychological process, it not only pertains or not only restricts itself to the organization, it can have an effect on our well-being also. So this makes stress critical. That is why it is important to understand stress, its sources, consequences, and of course, the most important aspect, the management of stress. Now let's look into different types of stress. You must have, uh, you know, have, have read about you stress, distress, etc. So I would like to take, uh, take it in a different dimension altogether. The first and the foremost one would be challenge stressors. When you're looking into challenge stressors, these are associated with workload. So you have a pressure to complete the tasks and urgently, there is a time urgency associated with the particular task, then you are having challenge stressors because there is time constraint, you have a lot of work in your plate, you cannot finish it within the time. This builds up a certain level of stress and that is a set of challenge stressors. Another could be hindrance stressors. Hindrance stressors keep you from reaching your goals. 
So the first one was the, the lack of, let's say, availability of the resources, maybe in terms of time, maybe in terms of the, the pressure that is coming from the organization, from your authorities. It is more associated to the workload, whereas hindrance pressure is something which is uh, blocking you. It is uh, acting as a barrier uh, between you and your goals. Red tape, it could be office politics, it could be confusion over job responsibilities. So this is where I would like you to think of you as an individual in your workplace and see whether office politics has become one important aspect or one important barrier from you reaching your goal. Has it, has it thrived? Has it come up as a barrier? You can also think in this dimension that you were not clear about the job responsibility. There was a group task that was allocated. Now you were not individually told or you individual members were not instructed on what to do or what each of your responsibilities were. So in that particular case, you were not able to do that because there was lack of clarity. And finally, when it came to the deadline, the task could not be completed. It had to be a collective responsibility, but somewhere you feel the pinch because you have to take the responsibility at individual level also. And this is mainly because of the lack of clarity. Had there been clarity, had the job been clearly assigned to you, you had the abilities, you had the resources, including time, you had the capability to do that. But because the job clarity was not there, because the job responsibility was not there, this, this uh, came up as a hindrance stressor. Now let's look into demands and resources in terms of stress. Demands are responsibilities, rem demands are pressures, obligations, and even uncertainties that individual face in the workplace. Sometimes it is not only with respect to the pressures that come from the top or the obligations that sort of come up as a reciprocity angle or come up as a reciprocal uh, work uh, tactic. But more than that, sometimes there is uncertainty. So this is equally applicable to not only the individual task, but also combined task. Whether the project will get sanctioned, whether if the project is getting sanctioned, whether the, the funds will come, or whether there is sufficient manpower that will be recruited. If not, what will be happening? And if the sufficient manpower is not coming, what will be your responsibility? Would I be given an additional responsibility? Would I have to do more than what is required? Or do I have to extend my, my work limit? All those aspects can also induce a certain level of stress inside you. Resources are things within an individual's control that can be used to resolve the demands. So this is where our theme emerges. If you recollect where I actually uh, put up the theme is mainly with respect to the resources and demands. Now studies have revealed that adequate resources help reduce the stressful nature of demands and no doubt demands and resources should match. That is the ultimate criteria. If demo emotional demands are causing, let's say the stress, they are causing resources in form of stress if the demands are there, then social support can act as a buffer, can act as a cushion. Sometimes you see that individualistic cultural uh, aspects or individualistic cultural context, they suffer because of lack of the social support because uh, many a time uh, deadlines come in and they are not able to cater to the needs. So you see that the situation is quite detrimental for those individuals. Whereas somebody who is having social support, somebody who can fall back, there is some cushion which can take the stress away, then they may be able to at least reciprocate in a desired way. So what are the different potential sources of stress? We can see a lot of different factors. I would like you to think, again, this will not be an exhaustive list. If you are an individual who is having you know, experience in your workplace, you can list maybe a couple of them more. So I, I don't claim that this is an exhaustive list, but these are some of the most prominent uh, culprits when it comes to stress. So potential sources of stress could be one, environmental factors. When you're looking into environmental factors, it includes 
economic uncertainties you know you don't know what is it happens at a macro level also it happens as a micro level when you look into this economic uncertainty specifically it could be based on how the organization is thriving or maybe the organization is having a, a change in the business model altogether or maybe at a macroscopic level whether the world economy is in a collapse there is some recession that's happening so all those factors will ultimately trickle down to the organization you are working and inevitably it will trickle down to you which will be acting as a stressor there could be also issues pertaining to technological change when you are looking into uh, let's say uh, some technology upgradation and there is a lack of knowledge transfer that's happening there is lack of uh, knowledge transfer that is happening with respect to the the change in technology you tend to feel the stress let's say take an example of a power plant you are being given a latest machine let's say a, a new gas turbine has come up and it has a certain different technology and you need people from let's say GE to train you but that has not happened because of maybe uh, some some procedural delays now because of the lack of training neither you are able to operate it nor even even if you operate it you are not able to operate in a very efficient and effective manner so technological change can ineffectively so technological change can effectively induce or or translate as a stressor there is no doubt about it the second critical aspect would be organizational factor when you are looking into organizational factor some of the important elements are task demands role demands and interpersonal demands so task is not a small aspect when you are looking into task demands you have to understand some of the critical aspects like the task uncertainty uncertainty of the task is always risky or always dangerous something which is not known or uncertain is always dangerous for us is always uh, let's say challenging for us so task uncertainty task complexity it, it is not only with respect to uncertainty it is also with respect to the complex nature of the task if the task is more complex then we are in a position not even as a group to solve that particular problem those situations will e effectively induce a stressor and can be stressful another important aspect could be that in the the way task is being defined you might be thinking or uh, taking the or understanding the task in a, a different way and the client could have given the task in a altogether different way so when you are looking into the final product or the service it is drastically different from the expectation of the particular client or the particular customer so that will deliver or render a certain level of stress factor another important as aspect could be the role demand the uh, what what is that particular role demanding whether it is you know sometimes there are roles which demand you to perform in a in a, a multiple aspect sometimes you have to be a reporting authority sometimes you have to be uh, let's say a validating authority sometimes you have to be the person who who goes to the nuts and bolts and and does the the job sometimes you have to train you are juniors sometimes you have to bring in creative ideas when you are otherwise stressed or emotionally restricted so all these aspects could also bring you a lot of stressors which is as part of role demands and the another important aspect could be interpersonal demands you know how you are being treated in the organization that could be a, a stress factor there could be situations where there are no uh, good interpersonal relations with a particular employee and you happen to be the team member of uh, the particular team in which he or she is also there so such situations such equations how to mitigate that how to solve that that creates an interpersonal demand that creates a certain level of organize that 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 comes under the umbrella of organizational factor which can induce certain level of stress another important as aspect could be personal factor personal factor as an aspect is very critical when it comes to two important aspect which is predispositions 
and personality. Now, predispositions could be generally your attitude where you don't have, let's say, a very open attitude. You are, you are sort of uh, introvert in nature. You don't uh, try to uh, be a person who is learning, who always trend, wants to go to places, understand things. Sometimes that, that could lead to a certain level of stress because the organization would warrant otherwise. The organizational setup you are, the team you are part of would warrant otherwise. Those situations could actually uh, trigger a certain level of stress inside you. Personality could be a certain factor. There could be personality mismatch, incongruence between what you are and what the organization expects out of you in terms of personality. That mismatch can also be a stressor. So personal factors are also very critical when it comes to a potential source of stress. Another important aspect could be the additive nature of stress as a factor because stress does not exist in isolation. It builds up. It builds up a lot of pent up feelings. It builds up a lot of you know, negativity. It, it builds up a lot of depression or uh, depressive thoughts. So this is where the additive nature of stress becomes critical or becomes detrimental. Uh, a sum total of opportunity stresses, constraint stresses and demand stresses makes it more additive in nature. So this is what are the potential sources or these are some of the potential sources of stress. When you look into individual differences in stress experience, that would be more interesting if you look in from different, pers different aspects like perception. How you perceive stress, individual differences, uh, we had detailed discussion on this in our diversity topic, if you recollect. When you look into stress, let's say, person A and person B within the same organization, they have a different approach towards stress. They have a different perception towards stress. For some of them, it might be a distress. For person B, so let's say for person A, it might be a distress. For person B, it might be a eustress. Person A might be feeling challenged, might be feeling sad, depressed. But person B might be seeing an opportunity in that particular challenge. So perception is critically relevant, important when it comes to stress. Another important aspect is job experience. You have seen this stress earlier also. Past is the key to the present and future. Please recollect that. Please try to connect this. So that's why most of my lectures are interconnected. So if you see job experience as a certain factor, you have already seen this particular uh, problem somewhere. So you do not feel or you do not see any stress that is coming because of the particular problem because you have seen this in the past, you were able to resolve it and you are in a position, you have the potentiality, you have the capability to resolve it. So it, it is never a stress anymore. Another important aspect, as I've already uh, mentioned, is social support. Sometimes there are stressors that come within the organization, but you have a family, you have, that's why uh, aspects like work-life balance is very critical. You have a, ham, a family to fall upon. You have a social support system whereby you can uh, have your friends, you can have a chat with them, you can, uh, always there are, uh, there are avenues to release the pent-up feelings. Always there are situations where you can, uh, you know, talk to your friends, relatives, your family members, spend time with them and these all take the stress away. Another important aspect could be personality. Person A again, the same, the same example I'll come back to which we took in terms of perception. Person A might be having a different personality comparing to person B. So when person A can take this stress very lightly, person B might not be able to because of the difference in personality. So there are individual differences when it comes to stress experience. The stress, the level of stress or the amount of stressors coming in your way might be same to both the individuals. But because of the difference in perception, because of the difference in job experience, because of the social support system, the differences in that and finally the differences in personality, the individual differences do exist in, in stress experience. When you look into culture differences, different culture gives rise to different sources of stress. You must have seen that, you know, there are certain cultures who are more cultural contexts which are more collectivistic. So you tend to have some peer pressure, some family pressure, which can, can be a source of stress, inevitably. 
there are some 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 aspects even individualistic cultural scenarios can bring in some other stressors in terms of a lack of social support inconspicuously that could be a source of stress one study revealed that us employees feel stressed by a lack of control whereas chinese employees feel that the same by job evaluations and lack of training so it is not that one one single culture context is the best they might have certain stressors another or contrasting culture context might have stressors but from a different dimension so these the existence the coexistence of both of them or the understanding of both of them is vital in appreciating the relevance of cultural differences in stress all those stress is bad there are all those stress is bad for employees across culture the cause and coping may differ due to cultural factors sometimes you are in as i've already mentioned in a collectivistic scenario you have certain social buffer you have certain social support system uh, which you can always rely on those act as cushion even if there there is some stress they can actually absorb the stress or as an individual you are more capable because of your upbringing because of your child rearing practices because of the surrounding you are the social support system you are you are able to cope up with the stress but there are certain individuals who do not have this particular uh, you know maybe cultural support maybe social support they might feel the stress in a extreme mode and there are consequences also will happen in an extreme level when you look into consequences we have to understand and appreciate that there are certain physiological symptoms it's not not just psychology which we come into that in as the next point when you look into stress you feel depressed more than that it takes a toll in your health in terms of physiological aspects like you can have you know uh, problems with your sleep you can have problems with your health in terms of uh, um, uh, you know bodily changes you might have problems with respect to uh, your concentration your focus so all these aspects can have or can be uh, uh, inevitably a, a consequence of stress psychological symptoms are many when you look into uh, stress you you tend to you know feel uh, depressed you you have lot of uh, stressors coming in way in your organization you, f- you don't feel like going to organization sometimes you don't want to work in the particular team sometimes there are there are organizations which which you would see that they they are very rosy in terms of outside appearance they are very good in terms of the pay structure very good in terms of what they are offering for uh, the employees as part of the incentives etc but once you are into the organization you you had a, a certain hard hard work uh, you rendered to get into the organization once you are into the organization you understand that the picture is not that rosy inside you will feel that there are psychological symptoms that come up as part of the stressors within the organization you feel sad you feel depressed there is a learned helplessness that comes into you so all these aspects are certain psychological symptoms which em- emerge as consequences of stress there are also behavioral symptoms sometimes you know because of the stress you are highly stressed in your workplace and you are going back to your work uh, your home and suddenly out of nothing you are frustrated sometimes uh, uh, an old person crosses the road you honk or you sometimes you create unnecessary voices you sometimes be uh, you know rash in terms of driving in terms of the way you react in terms of the way you react to your family sometimes you try to quarrel with your spouse sometimes you t- try to you know shout at your children all these are behavioral symptoms and which are reflected as part of consequences of stress now let's also look into the vital aspect because we had a detailed understanding of what stress is what are the causes and what are the consequences let's address the inevitable managing stress so there are certain approaches which i classify as individual approaches and organizational approach when you look into individual approach we have to take personal responsibility for reducing stress level nobody is going to do it for us 
we have to understand that in long run stress is going to have not only psychological symptom and problems it will also cause you physi physiological aspect as well as a change in your behavior so you have to take personal responsibility for reducing stress things like meditation things like relaxation techniques like meditation could actually be handy when it comes to individual approaches in managing stress uh, you could be with your good company but you could uh, you know spend time with the near and dear ones the people who can actually absorb your stress many a time it is said that your uh, kids can take away your stress so all these aspects take personal responsibility for that another important aspect could be time management techniques many a time most of the stressors emanate because of the lack of proper time management because you are running out of time every now and then you see that the deadline is approaching and you are not able to finish your job this happens to be a stressor every now and then so you understand that you try to mitigate that you try to work out a schedule whereby you can actually do things in a proper uh, timely manner so time management techniques can be brought in it could be that you you finish your task off rather than you are just focused on uh, you know many things you try to focus on one particular thing try to complete it then move to the next next task that could be a certain uh, approach towards managing stress another could be increased physical exercise it's always better that uh, not only with respect to your physical fitness when you do physical exercise it takes away your mind to a uh, all together or different world so if you are uh, you know too much you know uh, uh, moving around in terms of your mind in in within the organization organization politics organization stressors or the things that have happened which have caused ultimately stress physical exercise is a certain technique which can take away your thought to a different world that will make you more calm that will make you more composed and relaxed this is yet again another important individual approach towards managing stress another aspect could be relaxation training which i've already addressed in terms of taking personal responsibility for uh, uh, you know managing stress level There some relaxation techniques like meditation uh, this could actually bring in yoga which could actually bring in a certain level of uh, you know reduction in the stress levels you are otherwise facing because of your hectic work schedule expanded social support networks it's not merely uh, the 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 friends you have in let's say in facebook or uh, let's say the connections you have in linkedin that matter more than that a few handful of your friends to discuss the problems in your in your organization a few handful of uh, relatives or family members who can who you can trust who you are confident with who uh, your spouse or your kids who you can actually discuss the the day to day problems it takes away the stress it ultimately absorbs the stress and that will make you stress free so these are some of the uh, individual approaches towards managing stress but then there are certain organizational approaches also which we want to address one is improved employee selection and job placement i have time again emphasized on one point right person in the right job is always a must when you are looking into situations where there is uh, you know a person is not happy with his or her job a person is feeling that he is not the right fit for the job or he the, the organization is not a uh, right fit for him all these situations are emerging out of a poor recruitment and selection because the right person is in the wrong job or the wrong person is in the right job so this is the problem that that creates stress so organizational approaches should focus on taking the right person in the right job another important aspect is even if you are a person who who has not got the you know right job uh, the organization can feel that uh, okay he or she is not performing better but can be improved his or her performance can be improved to a great extent if we focus on uh, the training that can be provided to the particular employee and that can make striking differences to that particular individual realistic goal setting is yet another important aspect when you look into organization people come into organization they have they have goals which are 
drastically difficult or are uh, are highly uh, you know uh, utopian whereby they do not have the uh, capability to uh, observe that or attend that or uh, work uh, uh, an action plan towards achieving that so all these situations will ultimately lead to stress because you have put up a goal which is uh, almost very difficult to attain and you are not putting in effort to achieve that a time will come when all these factors start compounding and you feel stressor you feel stressed out so realistic goal setting is yet another important aspect redesign of jobs many a time you feel that uh, i've already emphasized on the the problems with the task the task uncertainty or the task complexity so redesign the job in such a way that the person who is competent enough to do, do that particular job will get that that particular job and he or she might be able to do it in a much uh, you know effective and efficient way increased employee involvement every single aspect if you are involved in the decision making if you are involved in the strategy making all these aspects will give a sense of ownership that you are also part of the game you are also part of the whole process and you tend to give your 100 percent and it hardly uh, emerges as a stressor rather it can act as a motivator it can help you in actually contributing more towards the organization there could be situations where you are where uh, you can improve organizational communication when there is uh, let's say only top down communication and there is hardly any feedback system or any feedback loop that goes all the way to the top uh, that those organizations suffer and mainly those organizations are the breeding grounds of stressors they give you a lot of stress because you do not know uh, you uh, do not know who is the right person to address your query to or you have a lot of things which you see at the ground level which does not uh, uh, you know make sense that comes from the top and the people who are sitting at the top are not able to decipher that or understand that and they are not listening to that this in itself can create a, or become a source of stress so when you try to uh, uh, re-channelize or improve your organizational communication it inevitably reduces the stress points that are there otherwise in the organization another important aspect could be employee sabbaticals you sometimes are in a mundane in a uh, uh, in a job which is mechanistic in nature or you are uh, you know for some time you have been doing without any break because you you liked it or you enjoyed it but at some some point you are, you feel the fatigue you feel that there is some burnout that's happening so rather than you taking it to the extreme level whereby you are forced to quit the organization quit the job because you cannot take it anymore it's always is advisable for the organization to give them some sabbaticals give the individual some relaxation in terms of uh, some time where they can you know use that particular time in finding themselves actually doing something which is passionate to them maybe pursue a hobby or maybe to take up a new task so all these things inevitably will actually increase the productivity of the organization and the individual and no doubt that it can curb it can curtail the stressors that are in action another important aspect could be corporate wellness programs there could be programs at, a, at an individual and the organization level that could be organized whereby individuals can take out their problems or they can they can actually discuss the issues and they can actually bring in a solution for the issues and it can inevitably uh, you know bring the stress point or the stress level down so let's uh, before concluding let's take a, a particular case where we look into extreme jobs and stress people who spend more than half their time working and commuting to and from work are deemed to be doing extreme jobs so this is the understanding of extreme jobs and with this understanding we have to read the case why do people take extreme jobs or allow their jobs to become extreme a 2006 study suggested that for both men and women the number one reason for working long stressful hours is not pay rather it's the rush they get from doing stimulating or challenging work as one asian manager said Building this business in markets where no one has done anything like this before is enormously exciting and important. We have built distribution centers that are vital to China's growth, 
They contribute to the overall prospects of our economy. Although this sounds all good, the situation is more complicated when you ask holders of extreme jobs about what their jobs cost them. Among them, 66% of men and 77% of women say their job interferes with their ability to maintain a home. For those with extreme jobs who have children, 65% of men and 33% of women say it keeps them from having a relationship with their children and 46% of male and female extreme job holders say their jobs interfere with having a strong relationship with the spouse. The problem of overwork has become so pronounced in South Korea that many employers are forcing employees to take time off and locking them out of their computer systems during scheduled vacation times. Managers complain that Korean workers have become comparatively unproductive during their work hours. In part because they are so exhausted, they cannot perform effectively. One authority on Korean society opines that employees are worried that if they do not work extreme hours, their employers will see them as expendable. Now, when you look into stress, what we had based on the analysis or detailed discussion we had, you have to understand that stress could be both you stress as well as distress. It could be positive and negative, but mainly it is negative. When you see the consequences, you will realize. You see that people within your organization, they are depressed, they are sad, they are, they are, you know, they don't know what to do ahead. There are certain aspects which you can do. We have listed down, we have detail on every single aspect. That said, I do not want to repeat, but I just want you to take one takeaway away from this lecture. And that is nothing but stress has to be controlled. When you are working in an environment which is stressful, you are not in a position to bring you the fresh ideas. It is not only with respect to the innovative workplace or let's say you are working in some R&D uh, organization, you need fresh ideas, nothing like that. Your mind is not there in that particular work, then the performance is severely affected, no doubt about it. If your performance is getting severely affected, it will have a compounding effect whereby the organization will ultimately judge you as a failure. So this is where from the beginning it is always relevant, it is always important that you try to control the stress. We have detailed on the individual aspects, we have also detailed on the organizational aspects. I hope that as, an, uh, as a part of uh, this particular course, you will try to understand those different individual as well as organizational aspects which you can use in your own workplace and try to reduce the stress levels. Uh, Stress-free employee will be a productive employee. Thank you for listening to me patiently. See you in the next class. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.